The first topic covered will be the standardization of the sodium thiosulfate using our primary standard, potassium iodate. Here are the relevant reactions. Become familiar with these. They will be important in your discussion of the chemistry of this titration. First, you'll fill the BOD bottle with roughly 100 grams of deionized water. Next, we'll add the potassium iodate. Set the repeater pipette to setting 5 with the appropriate pipette tip. Remember to dispense the first aliquot into a waste. And since we're adding 10 grams, we'll be having to add 2 aliquots for this standardization. Next, add the sulfuric acid. Note that this order of reagent additions will vary from our titration of the seawater. Next will come the sodium iodide and the sodium hydroxide solution. Note that with this addition, the solution does turn yellow due to the formation of iodine. Next comes the addition of manganese chloride. Note that because we have not stirred our solution, we have not equilibrated the pH and thus we have precipitated some of the manganese hydroxide. This is not what we want because in our subsequent titration, we will have additional contributions from the dissolved oxygen. So let's try this over again. Two additions of the um, primary standard and make sure that we are stirring before we add in our acid as well as the base and the sodium iodide. If you have any droplets of acid, be sure to clean them up as you can forget that they're there and then end up with some acid on your face, not fun. Now it's important that you give the solution ample time to equilibrate before we do the addition of the manganese chloride. The solution should be acidic at this point. And now we know that as we add in the manganese chloride, the precipitate, the manganese hydroxide, is not forming because of the pH of our solution. Now we will dilute up to the neck of the BOD bottle. Now you should pre-weigh your um, sodium uh, thiosulfate titrant. Make sure that you record the initial value of the mass of the pipette with your titrant. Be important. Now we're not adding the, um, the starch indicator just yet because according to um, our resident expert on this titration uh, adding the starch too early can actually strain your eyes during the titration. Now we want to get to this kind of pale yellow or straw yellow sort of color before we add the indicator. So 10 drops of this should suffice. Now at this point, the titration is dangerously close to our endpoint. So after each addition, make sure that you allow the solution to equilibrate completely. To visualize the endpoint using a piece of uh, white paper on the back can help um, 
as well as the uh, the label on the BOD bottle if you orient it in such a way. It's not shown here, but if you orient it in such a way, it can help you uh, visualize uh, the endpoint. Now make sure that you uh, weigh the, the pipette when you're finished. So right here is showing how difficult it would be to visualize this endpoint. Even though the, the iodine is colored, it's very difficult to, um, to visualize the endpoint because of the, the low absorptivity of iodine. And so when I was doing this titration, I wasn't really certain when I had reached the endpoint. And as you previously saw, having the starch in there makes it simple. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the blank titration. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to determine the effects that our reagents um, have on our determination of the oxygen content. So we're going to be reducing the volume of each addition to, uh, to about one milliliter or one gram. Key thing to remember about the blank titration is that we're going to have to mass our titrant pipette a total of three times once before the titration, once after the titration of the first addition of potassium iodate, and once after we titrate the second addition of potassium iodate. And when you're going through this, you'll understand why that's going to be important. Another thing to note is that because we've added one-tenth the mass of our uh, primary standard, we will be reaching our endpoint much quicker. Here we're adding the second addition, so this is a good time to take the, the weight of your uh, pipette as your second measurement. Mass for the first uh, titration should be slightly larger than the mass of the second titration. There, and now we're going to take our third measurement of that titrant pipette. The carboids will be equipped with a uh, tube to fill up our BOD bottles, and what this is going to allow us to do is to prevent the entrapment of air bubbles into our seawater, thus artificially raising the oxygen content. So the reaction of interest in this portion of the sample prep is the, um, the oxidation of our manganese to, from manganese 2 plus to manganese 3 plus um, in the presence of oxygen. The oxygen in this case is our limiting reagent because we are adding such high excess of not only base but also manganese such that we essentially entrap all oxygen in our sample so that we reduce any inaccuracies. For the prep of the seawater samples, there will be reagent bottles equipped with auto pumps. Make sure that after each use that you wipe down the, uh, the tip of the pump. Ensure that you submerge the tips in your seawater And after you're finished, cap, pour off any excess, and give it a good shake. If you have any droplets on the side, which is most likely going to be the case, just use a Kim wipe to, to dry it down so that you don't drop your bottle, and allow the crystals to settle. After a while, give it another good shake. The next step will involve acidifying our uh, seawater sample such that we oxidize our iodide to iodine. And the coupled redox reactions are provided right here. Make sure that you're familiar with those. And another thing to note is that when we are doing this step, we need to be as efficient as possible. 
because the second we open up the stopper, we are allowing oxygen to exchange between the, the laboratory air and our sample. Good idea to have your acid already in your syringe and your stir bar ready. 